So a lot of Christians, um, they think there's nothing wrong with, you know, celebrating Halloween and all this stuff. And Casey, um, you being in, you know, in Satanism and God delivering you from that, healing you and bringing you freedom. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? October 31st is like the ultimate day. Um, it starts, it, it's like Cri Christians, Easter and Christmas all rolled in together. Um, the celebration usually starts at dusk and goes on. The golden hour is 11 p.m. to midnight. That's when the most demonic forces are out and about, about and active. Um, people should not be, participate in any way, shape, or form because you are worshiping the devil. There is no two ways about it. I mean, he's real happy that Christians allow their kids to serve him one night of the year. I mean, he's pretty happy about that. Well, should Christians celebrate Halloween? Some believe it can be taken back like other holidays, but a former Satanist who is now a pastor says, no, Christians should not celebrate it. I recently caught it with John Ramirez and he had a strong warning for believers. Tell us a little bit about where you were in relation to Satanism and worshiping the devil. Well, 25 years, uh, eight years old, boy, little boy, eight years old, demon church, I learned being trained by high ranked devil worship with warlock and spiritual witches, turning me to oh, know how to take over territory, demon, demonic contract, demon, different demon territory, demons, principalities, first, second heaven. I was being trained all the way to the age of 35, sold my soul to the devil, got married in Halloween, had a demonic wedding in Halloween. I baptized my daughter to the dark side at the age of 11. So that was my whole entire life. I mean, I, I breathed, ate, and slept witchcraft. Wow. Astro projecting, I will astro project over region, leave my body, astro project, curse the region, because if I can curse the region, I can capture the people. Knowing what you came from and what you used to do, you're pretty um, discouraged that you see Christians celebrating Halloween. Why? I, 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 I don't know how you can cheat on God. I don't know how you can cheat on the Lord Jesus Christ because I don't see Satan is coming on Good Friday and coming hanging out with us, right? You know, I got married on Halloween and had a demonic wedding. Why would you put your kids, your family, why would you put your purpose, your destiny, why would you put your whole eternity in a demonic altar? But people say it's just fun, candy, kids are having costumes on, and, well, but you say it's it, much more. It, 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 the candy, you know, I, 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 shared, I, I never shared this before, but this candy, people from different walks of life pray over these candies. Witchcraft, they pray over the candies. You knock on people's door, you don't know the person that you knock on knows she's a witch. Okay, you don't know she's a witch, she's doing Wicca, she's practicing New Age, and you knock on her door and you come in, you come in, in, in legal rights of this witch or this wall, or this person is practicing this stuff, giving you this kind of candy. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking that stuff home, you put that stuff into your body. Mm -hmm. Amen? And on top of that, in, 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 in top of that, I'm Tom LeVayne said, out of his mouth, you know, he, 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 used to, he, was, he was the ruler of the Church of Satan, mm -hmm. right? Out of his mouth, he said, I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their child to celebrate Halloween one time a year, the devil's holiday. And it took Adam and Eve to lose everything because of one mistake. Mm. It took Esau one, one circumstance to lose his birthrights, yeah. right? Yeah. So why would, you, why would you bring that kind of curse into your house and curse your family from three to four generations? So when your kids is five and you think it's cool, you dress them up. Once you put a costume on someone, you see the, the the trick of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They were made in the image of God. They were made in God's perfect image, right? The devil tricked them with sin and changed their identity. Yeah. And once you put the costume on the kid, I don't care if you dress them up as Noah. I don't care if you dress them up as Abraham. Once you put this costume on Halloween, the the birthright of Halloween, you're changing your kid's identity. The purpose of the wow. destiny has been canceled unless you renounce it and bring it back. That is the trick of the devil. Now, now that you're sharing, and you share this everywhere you go. Everywhere you, I go, you, I'm not afraid. I mean, I'm not, politi I'm not politically correct. I'd rather be right with God. You'd be mad with me, but at least you'll make heaven. Jesus. So today I want to talk about um, Halloween and Christianity. So Halloween is kind of a taboo subject for Christians as far as talking about not celebrating it. Um, there seems to be two camps in the thought of Halloween and Christians. One is there's absolutely nothing wrong with Halloween. It's all in good fun. Just don't celebrate the evil side and it's perfectly fine. And the other side says do not celebrate Halloween at all. Um, it's totally evil. And I guess there is kind of a middle ground where some people say, well, don't celebrate it. But 
reach out to the lost with fall festivals at church and handing out tracks to trick-or-treaters. So I just wanted to speak a little bit about that um, because I know um, I have more experience with the darkness of Halloween and the evil side than I think some people do. And I just want to share that because I think it's really important and it's something that people need to know, Christian or not Christian. Um, so as a witch, when I celebrated Halloween, Halloween is a high holy day for Satanists and witches alike. And um, so I did not celebrate Halloween thinking it was evil. We didn't do sacrifices. We didn't hurt animals. Um, and it seemed all in good fun. It was a day to celebrate the dead and to party. And um, it seemed perfectly good and fun. It wasn't until after I got into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ that I really started to realize how evil Halloween is. Um, in the Bible, God speaks very clearly about not being involved in paganism, witchcraft, mediums, um, sacrificing children, and things of that nature. But what many people don't know is that Halloween is a high holy day for Satanists and witches and other occult members who actually hurt uh, people and animals. Um, they do things, it's not just on Halloween. Uh, Anton LeBay says that Halloween is the third most important um, holiday on their calendar. He, if you don't know, was the founder of the Church of Satan. He is now deceased. Uh, the Church of Satan is not deceased, though. And is alive and active. And um, Satanists actually love the fact that Christians celebrate Halloween because Halloween opens you up to your dark side. Now, I know a lot of Christians say that they don't celebrate the evil of Halloween, but the thing is, is that you really can't get away from the evil of Halloween. It is a day dedicated to Satan, evil, and death. So as I was saying, witches see Halloween not as evil, but as you know, celebration of the dead and partying, but Satanists and other occultists see it as a day, yes, of the dead and partying, but to them, that means um, human sacrifices, animal sacrifices, uh, ritual abuse, such as beatings, and uh, also sexual abuse. So it is very real that babies are being murdered, animals are being murdered, and other people, children and adults alike, are being abused. Um, it's the real deal. And so Halloween, um, Easter, and Christmas time are huge pagan holidays that they do these kinds of rituals, but Halloween is one of the, the one of the more important ones. Um, and there are many people out there right now who they come to this time of the year and it's so hard for them everywhere you go just in in my neighborhood my neighborhood stores halloween is everywhere the evil is prevalent um the decorations i see they are spiders giant spiders um vampires witches ghosts severed heads human body parts uh headstones and things of that nature um, I don't really see how you can find innocence in those decorations. I understand that you could dress up in costumes that you consider non-evil, such as princesses and superheroes and, and your favorite cartoon characters. But the fact is that I really want you to think about is that you can't separate yourself from the evil that Halloween is. To its very origins, Halloween is evil. If you trace Halloween all the way back to the ancient times, before Catholicism even, um, it has deep roots and it is all based on celebrating other gods and goddesses, which by the way are demons in disguise, and sacrificing and abusing humans and animals. Now, fast forward to current day, um, you don't see, or it's not widely talked about, those horrifying things. Um, Satan has made it very easy to ignore those things. And as a matter of fact, we are completely desensitized to evil, the devil, and his demons. But the spiritual realm is very real. And you are inviting evil into your life by participating in Halloween. 
because God has clearly stated to us that we are to have no part of it. So when we have a part of it, we are signaling in the spiritual realm, which is all around us, unseen, that we're open. It's an open, open portal or gateway. Um, I have been told that witches curse the Halloween candy, and I can only imagine what other curses are going on to Halloween costumes and whatnot. At this time of year, covens are very active, um, trying to place curses on different churches and different individuals, especially individuals like myself who would speak out against Halloween. Um, it's, a, it's very serious. I take Halloween very seriously. It grieves me to the core, to, to my bones, which with immense sadness that Christians participate in Halloween. It, it's not something for Christians. We are called to be the light of the world. We are called to step out of darkness. Our savior has died and shed blood so that we can be redeemed so that we don't have to be slaved to hell. So why are we celebrating and playing and having fun on a day that is dedicated to Satan and that is about death and decay? It just really, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And I just want to stop and pray right now. Lord Jesus, I pray that anyone who watches this video is covered by the blood of Jesus. I pray that you would just penetrate every heart and soul with your word right now and your truth, God. That you would divide anything that I have said that is untrue away from the truth. And that you would take each person that watches this video and give them great blessings in your favor, God. We love you and we praise your mighty name, Jesus, for you are our wonderful Savior. You are the sacrifice the last sacrifice and the only sacrifice that ever need be done. And by your shed blood and your work on the cross, we can live eternally in joy, truth, light, and hope. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, God. We love you. Fall is great. But I have to ask you this. Why are you celebrating fall? Which other season do you have parties and celebrate? I have never heard of a spring celebration or festival winter festival. We don't do those. Why is it you feel so called? Why is the pull to celebrate fall so strong? And it's really not just Halloween. It's a whole season where we take up celebrating all of October, pumpkin patches, pumpkin carving, decorating our houses with leaves and ghosts and pumpkins and fall colors and I have to ask you to think and ask yourself and pray and ask God, why is it the urge is there so strong? This is a time of year when witchcraft increases greatly. You can glorify God by not celebrating Halloween. And I say this to you, if you don't celebrate Halloween and you stand up for the truth of what Halloween is and spread the word and other Christians stop celebrating Halloween, or even people who are not Christian stop celebrating Halloween just on the premise that they refuse to participate in a time where people are being murdered. Think of what that would do to the devil. That would make him so mad. And I want to make him mad because I tell you what, the devil tried to steal my joy, kill my life and trample on me for most of my life. But look what God has done for me and you too. So give him a black eye and step away from Halloween, away from fall festivities and pray and just pray. We are called to be a part or a separate from this world, to not conform, to be transformed, to be renewed, to be holy. And it is hard. It's very hard. Not because I miss out on Halloween because I don't. I can eat candy or let my kids dress up in a costume lots of other times of the year. It doesn't have to be October or even October 31st. I could stop one day of the year and not participate in dressing up, going to parties, or eating candy. 
It doesn't even bother me. What bothers me is that sometimes it feels very lonely. But I've prayed and prayed and I said, God, are you sure that we're supposed to separate ourselves from Halloween and all the activities? And time and time again, I continue, continually hear, yes. So I just urge you to pray. I thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this and have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye. Devil's number one holiday. It's Halloween. The devil one. The devil's holiday is Halloween. And a lot of believers today, today, you know, they are celebrating Halloween. They are going on and renting costumes, buying costumes, making costumes, uh, painting their doors, putting pumpkins in front of the door. First of all, the pumpkin, the pumpkin. When you take the pumpkin, you you you, you represent the dem- the demon that controls the rivers, which is the demons called Ochun and Santeria. So the pumpkin brings that demon into your house when you put pumpkins at your door. You see, so 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 that demon operate with pumpkins. So when you put pumpkins in your door on Halloween, as believers, you are giving the devil a, a entry. You're giving that principality, the demon that run the rivers. Her name is Ochun, which is a, Je- a type of Jezebel in the Jehovah religion. You're bringing that demon into your home. You're giving it access to your home, access to your family. And 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 the most remarkable thing that the devil taught me was, I love when they celebrate Halloween. I love when they get dressed. I love when they celebrate my holiday because they come intertwined. You come intertwined with darkness. I don't care if you're reading your Bible 20 times a day. When you turn around and you celebrate Halloween or you open your door to Halloween or you open your life to Halloween or you open your family to Halloween, the devil has you by the throat. The devil has a stronghold on you by the throat. And, and, and one of the things that the, the devil has shown at the time that I was in an enemy's camp, the devil has shown me that the reason he loves Christians to celebrate Halloween, because it brings four, it brings, the Bible says it brings a four to five generation of curse in your family. That's one of the issues that the devil knows, because and then if he knows that you can celebrate Halloween as a believer, he knows that the next generation in your family will celebrate the same thing because it brings the generation of curse or bring a ripple effect in the spur round would attach yourself to your other family members. And on top of that, he, the devil, one of the things that the devil loved that Christian believers will celebrate Halloween is, 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 and I'm giving this out today because I hope that it, once it's in the archives, people can tune into it because uh, to, uh, Halloween is not, we're not too far off from Halloween. We're not, I mean, uh, July is over. We, we in August, we coming up, we coming up in the month of August. Summer is, is gone pretty much. So, so believers are preparing themselves Halloween party, Halloween gathering. Would you have churches? To, you have churches that are doing something that it, that it blows my mind, brother Shannon. You have churches that are that are going out and uh, celebrating for, instead of Halloween, they're celebrating the harvest. Harvest. I mean, God, God said the only harvest we know is the souls of people that are out there that are lost. The, har- the, the, the harvest is planted. The workers are few. I mean, what is this harvest stuff that we have to celebrate to replace Halloween in the churches? So you're bringing your curse to your church when you do that. You're bringing, I mean, you, what, what would you, you can give candy and, and stuff to people throughout the year. Do, I mean, you, you want to give candy in your church? Hey, let's celebrate Resurrection Sunday. We give out candy. Let's make it a celebration in the church that Jesus has risen, that Jesus came out the tomb, that we are alive, that we are alive in Christ. Let's celebrate that. Why do you have to wait for, for Halloween, October 31st, to do harvest in your church when you're bringing the curse upon the children in your church? Because the devil... It's, that's like 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 a substitute of Halloween. Why do you substitute Halloween with something else? When it's not even in the Bible, the Lord say it's not even in the Bible to celebrate a substitute a holiday from the holiday. So, and another thing is you, you're dressing up your kids. One of the biggest demonic disillusion that the devil brings to to the body of Christ on Halloween is to change costume, put on an outfit, paint your face. I don't care if you put on the Little Mermaid. I don't care if you put on Casper the Friendly Ghost. I don't care if you put on uh, whatever Ninja Turtle. Whatever costume you put on. One of the things that has amazed me the most, that Jesus created Adam and Eve to be perfect. He created them in the garden. Everything was perfect. And when the devil got into the garden and touched them and convinced them and, 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 and confused their mind, that he changed their identity. He changed their identity. And one amazing thing that the devil does to many Christians today when you put on a costume, he changes your identity of who you are in Christ.
by putting on the costume that you're not. You open yourself up to the most demonic attack on Halloween ever you can ever imagine. So you're no longer in Christ. Your identity is changed. The devil is the biggest identity theft stealer of mankind. Amen? The devil is the biggest identity death stealer of mankind. There's Christians that are walking around that don't have no identity who they are. They don't have no identity who God has called them to be. They don't have no identity who God created them to be. They don't have no identity of who, what their purpose. You stop Christians out there in the street, and you say, what is your purpose and your destiny? I don't know. But they know how to celebrate Halloween. And I guarantee you that if you ask those believers that they want to be honest or transparent, have you ever celebrated Halloween? Yes, I have. And if you're celebrating harvest, you're celebrating Halloween. And that's the danger of, of, of believers today, that instead of us affecting the world, the world is affecting us. Instead of us affecting the world and bringing them to the church, we're bringing the world into the church. And now the church is entertainment. The church is, is an amusement park. The church is the circus. We need to entertain people to keep people. We need to entertain people so they can come back. No, I don't entertain anybody because I bring the cross of Jesus Christ. God will do the rest. And, and Halloween is, is one of the, the man, if, you, if you see, if you go back to the history of Halloween, and I'm talking about the history years after years, the most demonic attack, the most people missing, the most people missing, people, human sacrifices, uh, skulls, uh, cemeteries, plots upside down, people digging out bones and skeletons, and people digging out skulls for Halloween. If you see the situation with Halloween, if you see the situation with, with, with attack with, uh, with the, uh, the gentleman, the, 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 young boy, the young kid that did the, the, the attack on uh, the movie theater out in Colorado, a demon, a, 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 demon, a, a demon possessed person celebrated Halloween. If you see the situation with the young man in, uh, in the school in Connecticut, celebrated Halloween. You, it's Halloween is like the opposite, and I shouldn't say the opposite because I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just trying to give you an, an analogy how we celebrate Good Friday, how we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, the importance of Good Friday, the importance for believers to celebrate Resurrection Sunday because without the resurrection, without Good Friday, there's no Christianity. Without Halloween, there's no devil. You know, and then the day after, the day after Halloween, all, all Saint, all Saint Day. All Saint Day, people buying candles and buying candles and celebrating and making uh, different food offerings to their dead relatives. Those are demons, people. You, 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 got, you got Christians celebrating All Saint Day, the day after Halloween, which is November 1st. So how are you going to celebrate these things and call yourself blessed? How are you going to celebrate these things and say you're in Christ? How are you going to celebrate? It's like, me get, it's like me being married and I'm sleeping with a prostitute, but I love my wife. Oh, I'm, I'm married. I love my wife. But I'm sleeping with a prostitute. No, there's no way that that makes sense. There's no way that you can, you can fit that in someone's mind. So, so the attack, the demonic attack, the demonic stronghold, the gateways, the portals, the, 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 four, the four to five generations being cursed, it starts celebrating Halloween. Halloween, it, it, people think, is, they look at it, they look, you know, we get caught up with the historical aspect of what Halloween is. But people... That's just a story. The, the, the whole picture of Halloween is that you're honoring the devil. You bow down to the devil because I used to celebrate Halloween. The biggest witchcraft that I used to do was on Halloween to kill, steal, and destroy Christian believers, destroy anything that came in my path that week that, that, that I, I was preparing a week ahead of time. As a matter of fact, I was preparing two weeks ahead of time to kill you on the 31st. Coffins, bones, portions, you name it. I had it. Halloween it is a nuisance. It is an abomination in the eyes of a holy God. So how is it that you're going to go to a Halloween party? How is it you're going to have a, a, a harvest in your church and call it blessed and call it you, uh, you honoring God when God never called you to do a harvest in your church, when God never called any Christian to put pumpkins and colored things on their door or put, uh, put uh, spider webs you know, spider webs, entrapments on your windows, and, 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 and goblins, and all this kind of goblins, uh, uh, demonic forces on, on your windows, or on your door, or, or, or around your house. I mean, that is the thing. If you have done that, it's time to repent tonight. It's time to ask God for forgiveness. It's time to call Mega Man Radio and say, help me close these doors and cut the ties that the enemy has on me, my family, and the next three or four generations in my, in, in, in my family line. 
the Halloween is, is is poison to the believer and to the non-believer. If, if you look at the stories in this year coming up, I give you an example. Look at the newspaper this year coming up to non-believers. How many people die and get killed and get stabbed and get shot and get mi- and they're missing on Halloween? People, if you play with fire, if you play with fire, you're going to smell like toast. And not even if you play with fire, you're going to burn your whole house down. And you have nothing left of you. Because the devil comes to play for keeps. The devil plays for keeps. The devil is the most, he has a mastermind of strategies. Believe me, I sat in the devil's mind for 25 years. I sat in the devil's mind for 25 years. His mind is full of strategies. How to entrap, engage, and kill, steal, and destroy to holidays, to events, to cultures. I was talking to a young lady in my church uh, this past Sunday, Brother Shannon, and she told me as a Muslim, she was a devout Muslim at the time. Thank God she's saved today. A uh, wonderful young lady, a devout Muslim. And she said that she, she described the ceremony that they do in Islam with the, with the uh, ceremonies of bath cleanings and all that. That same ceremony is the same demon that does it in Santeria. But to them, it's a culture thing. Okay, to the Muslim and, and to the people in Santeria, it's a culture term. It's the same demon operating entrapment, set up, engaging, killing, steal, and destroy. And for the, for the only purpose they do this is to keep you away from the cross and your purpose and your destiny to know Jesus Christ. And, and I end with this. And I say this to the believers out there that are listening on the sound of my voice. It's time to repent. It's time to make right with God. Don't play with a holy God. The Bible makes it clear. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus said in his word, be afraid of me that I can destroy your body and your soul. People, I went to hell. I don't know how long I was there. That's how I got saved. I tell you right now, I, I, I could have been there for a half hour. I could have been there for 20 minutes. I can't even give you the time that I was down there. But I did went. And one thing, just that 20 minutes, half hour, they literally say I was there for 20 minutes and a half hour. That was enough to tell me to turn from my wicked ways, to turn from, from 25 years of devil worshiping. I turned because just a glimpse of what that was, whether it's 20 minutes, or 20 minutes or 25 minutes, the time I was there was enough for me to say yes to Jesus and no to the devil. So imagine to be in hell for eternity. There's people that today, that died today, and they started their first day in hell. Don't let the entrapment and the lies and the deception there's something that looks cool, that looks good, that looks harmless, send you to a place that you spend your eternity and never to return and never to even say nothing because you are separated from a holy God. You're separated from a place that God has predestined for you to live with him for an eternity. And my message today, Brother Shannon, is I will say like Ezekiel said in, 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 in chapter 33, the train is coming, and you're sitting on the tracks. And I say to you, get off the tracks. The train is coming. The watchman on the wall, and that's what I'm talking about. So your blood today is off my hands because I told you what Halloween is about. Now, if you want to celebrate it, that's up to you. If you want to do harvest in your church, that's up to you. But I sounded the trumpet, and I'm telling you today, whoever celebrates Halloween is cursed beyond you can imagine. I leave you with this. It's time to repent. It's time to turn to Jesus Christ. Hi, brothers and sisters. I hope you can hear me. Um, let me put this a bit closer. Here we go. So this video is going to be about um, Halloween and from the perspective of someone who was involved in witchcraft before coming to Christ. Um, just for a warning, there's going to be some quite heavy things I talk about. The Lord's given me quite a, a burden and a, like a duty, I feel, to, to talk about these things um, to his people. So a little bit about my background is I was involved in the occult and 
Halloween, the, the history of Halloween is where there's all of the history of where people used to dress up like evil spirits um, to try and camouflage on that night because there was so much activity from evil spirits. Um, and the way that the townsfolks would ward them off would be to dress like them, to camouflage like them. And if they conformed like the evil spirits, they were believed to be less likely to be targeted and messed with by the evil spirits. Now, as an ex-witch, I know that that night is very, very important for the Kingdom of Darkness. It's the time where the veil is thinnest. It's where you get all of your um, sorcerers, magicians, witches, warlocks, um, wizards, um, shamans, druids, you know, all of those spiritual people that are involved in um, the dark side. And, um, you know, what we were talking about recently in the Bible study was how the occult, the, the word the occult means hidden, right? So a lot of those people that do ceremonies on Halloween night, a lot of them don't know that they are aligning with the devil. I mean, I didn't know until I came to the Lord. The occult means hidden and, and sometimes that is hidden from the person doing it. Very, a lot of the time people are involved in the occult without even knowing it. And see, the enemy is like this. He tricks us. And so, let's rewind it a little bit. And I'll just share with you a little bit about my story. I was involved in witchcraft as a child. It led me to seeing dark shadows walking around my door. Every time I looked at my door in my bedroom, I'd see a, around a seven foot dark shadow silhouette moving across. I would see and I would be pushed down to the ground from above. I would feel um, a heavy force. One time it pushed me down to the ground. I, I had voices, I had condemnation. I wasn't aware of God, but I was aware of the devil at that point. And when I got involved in magic, it was too late, or so I thought, and I was told. <laughs> I was owned by the the dark forces that I was inherently evil and there was nothing I could do about it and I carried this condemnation as a child for a very long time because I was involved in witchcraft. It opened up doorways to me as a child that no child should open and I was so nervous. I used to sleep at night time with the bed covers over me with a tiny hole to be able to breathe out of because I was so terrorized. I used to count every word that I said on my fingers. It was like a nervous twitch. And if I said enough words to have a space on this finger, then I was good. And then if I didn't, I was condemned. And there was just so much for my small child mind to deal with when I'd opened up that can of worms of witchcraft and magic. It's real. I, I was involved in so much of the occult at such a young age. and. All I can remember being an influence on me for dark things was we used to, me and a friend who practiced witchcraft together, we would go and see this lady and she was a Buddhist and we would go to her and I think we were around six and we would go to this Buddhist's house and this, this was kept from my memory for a very long time and we would do rituals with um, prayer beads and, and saying mantras, Buddhist mantras. I didn't know what I was saying. I think I tried to find it and it was something about um, nature worship and I mean that's where I ended up going. Uh, so I had the influence of a, of a lady doing a ritual, I had influence of things like Halloween, I remember me and my friend would make gravestones as in like paper ones and stick them on the wall at, uh, on Halloween night and sleep like this and you know just we were so consumed with the darkness. We were so silly as well, because when you're a child, you don't know what you're messing with. You really don't. And if you have parents that don't know that magic exists, they are lulled 
to sleep as well by the by the devil whilst the devil takes their children and this is why I'm talking about Halloween and that I've got this heavy burden because that was my childhood with magic then I got rid of all those things and then I went as a, as a young adult um, probably around 16 so a teenager I got involved in what I thought was white magic and what I thought was uh, I thought I was a, um, a light worker that's what I called myself inside I was like I'm a light worker I'm here to um, oh you don't even want to know what I believed it was so so nuts um, and so I got involved in tarot readings again as in doing them <laughs> consulting um, runes uh, anyway I just was involved in in magic again witchcraft again but it was repackaged into something that was light and was good and it's to help people and wow was I wrong the enemy chewed me up and spat me out I was in this place of utter brokenness after I got involved with yoga, meditation, um, uh, psychedelic drugs, um, uh, yeah, all of these things whilst doing uh, ritualistic things and I, there's just so much that I could go into but I don't want to focus too much on all of that. By the end of it I was you know, well, I was friends with Satanists, I was friends with shamans, I was friends with Druids, I was friends with Wiccans, I was friends with, you know, pretty much people that thought they were really fairies, you know, I was like friends with like pretty much even physicists that would explain away reality. Just, I was friends with all realms of, of magic and basically different forms of the occult. Um, and I just thought it was all, you know, different ways that people experience reality and different ways that people have their own walks and, uh, you know, everyone's truth was subjective and I had no idea, I was lost, you know, completely lost. And I was going to be someone to advocate for um, ayahuasca down in Cornwall. I had friends with shaman energy healers up in Glastonbury and they wanted me to be an advocate for the rituals down in Cornwall and gathering, basically a coven, gathering a group of people together to do energy healing and ayahuasca and psychedelics and different things to alter your mind. So I have a little bit of experience in all of these things now when I came to the Lord it's very simple there is the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness you're either with Jesus or you're not with Jesus and it made everything so much well everything made sense finally because I had the eyes of Christ and I realized just what I was involved in there's so many people caught up in all of this that just think it's to help improve themselves and to improve the way that they treat others and to bring peace and it's just it's a false peace it's a false peace and um, the end of that is despair now why am I talking about all of this I'm talking about all of this in regards to Halloween because Halloween is a, a festival a celebration a time really it's a massive spell night a massive night of um, incantation and ceremonial you know like if you're involved in all of that stuff, you wait till this night for special and specific purposes. Now, because the veil is thinnest, and, and it is, and I, maybe it's because of all of the ritualistic stuff happening and so many people aligning with the kingdom of darkness, it gives it more power, I don't know. But you know how back in the day, people were dressing costumes to, look like they are evil spirits to camouflage so they would conform to the evil to be left alone now isn't that so true in our christian walk when we are a light when we are christ's we are then attacked i mean i had no idea when i was involved in the occult that i was really riddled with demons really riddled with so much darkness 
until I came to Christ and he filled me with his light and then those things were revealed and exposed for what they were. So these uh, different forces that, the, that light workers believe are um, of light and good, um, spirit guides, that's the word, these spirit guides and different um, entities that the people in witchcraft, when they see them as light, they are not light, they are dark, they're all dark. Only when you come to Christ do they reveal their true colours and I've been in that and it's, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying to truly see what these entities, what these characters and personalities and things that are consulting you and telling you, what they truly are is absolutely pure evil, pure evil. Like, I've never, I've never experienced or known such hatred and, and wanting to tear you apart as I have when I've come to Christ and then those entities that I was dealing with before who were guiding me and, you know, showing me so much wisdom and and giving me dreams and prophecy and and leading me on this rabbit trail of destruction when i when i truly saw them for who they were in christ it was terrifying and the thing is if you are celebrating halloween you're aligning with those things you're aligning with the kingdom of darkness you're in fact going involved in their ritual now you might not know that so you know, that's the thing with the occult, it's, it's hidden knowledge, it's hidden. So many people that are involved in it are taken as fools. And, and then, but not you, brothers and sisters, not you. You are children of God, you are not to align yourself with the enemy. That's not, it's not for you, that's not where you belong. You don't belong in, in playing games with something that is definitely not playing games. I mean, the devil is so evil. And the thing is, like, I've been, I know I never was a Satanist, as it were, but I align myself with Satan. Um, and you could say I was somewhat more dangerous because I appealed to people as the light side of Satan when I was involved in the New Age and witchcraft and, um, you know, light work and Reiki healing and all of that stuff. Now, I was friends with Satanists and one of them said to me one day, you know, to be initiated into his coven, his satanic coven, the way in which they did that, he told me that the ritual, what they did, and basically they would, they stripped him naked, they tied him up in a stressed position, I think in like a bit of a fetal position, but on his feet, so he couldn't really move, and, and they tied him up, and they blindfolded him, and they whipped him very hard for a very long time until he came to this point where he was like out of his body where he was in this hypnosis state and this was so that he could invoke spirits willingly aligning with the devil so that he could have knowledge and power ultimately to feed pride he wouldn't say that but it was so he had knowledge and power now he's willingly doing that. They willingly do that. They willingly, in, they willingly put themselves and the, the group in a traumatic experience, inflict trauma to fracture the person and allow a gateway through for the demonic to possess the person. Now they're willingly doing it, but Satanists do that to children they do that to children and when you are invested in the devil when you're putting all of your energy and time and devotion and I mean they are devoted when you're doing that and you know that on Halloween night is the night where you probably will get the most investment most return the most reward the outcome will be most likely to do what you want. Just think about how many children are going through that on Halloween night. Now there's on the surface of you dressing your children up and taking them out and 
knocking on doors and getting sweets and it's all lovely but you're part of a ceremony of dark magic and that's the truth there is so much evil in this world and on Halloween night we can't just pretend like it's all fun and games because it's not you know the Lord was speaking to me today a lot about your will your free will and I remember when I was being trained by some witches who were hedge witches and they were also Reiki practitioners energy healers as well as shamans and um, ayahuasca they did ayahuasca ceremonies and did energy healing during those ceremonies they you know they were many things <laughs> and I came under them and they started teaching me more and opening me up more to more yeah you, you know and one time when they were doing Reiki on me and I was learning to read auras and you know they said that they saw my um, spirit guide they described it exactly how I know my sp or knew my spirit guide guides to look like and they said to me they're here telling me that I need to help align your chakra about free will they want to help you activate completely your own free will to them you know I was so deceived and I was like great working on that area of my chakras and doing mantras and different things to align with what now I know as demons um, but the Lord put it into my remembrance today about it being about my free will that's what they were after they were after my total and utter will my will there is power in our will in man's free will God's given us free will do we align our will with the devil or do we align our will with God and whoever we align with is who will use us what does the devil do the devil is persistently at your door knocking 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 oh maybe this person at the door is okay maybe they they're dressed nice they're dressed as an angel maybe I'll open the door to them no no see this whole thing is a mockery you have children who the devil is trying to claim to take to hell embodying the character of the devil coming to your door knocking on your door and expecting you to give him an offering to give him a sacrifice to bow down at him and join in with his games it's it's just so evil it's so evil and you know I understand that those of you that haven't been involved in things like the occult or witchcraft you probably you might not have even known you just thought oh it's just fun and games but the root of this the root of it the history of this is evil and the the very essence of it on that night is so evil so evil even if there are shamans or wiccans or you know energy healers or white witches or you know people that think that they're doing good and they're doing good rituals and they're doing ceremonies to love they don't know who they're worshiping the satanists do but the others don't they think that they worship well I thought I was worshiping the universe you know people think that they're worshiping mother earth Gaia you know trees whatever worshiping nature but when you are not worshiping the one true creator God our Lord if you're not looking to Jesus and him what are you looking at and the Lord made it very clear to me that I was looking at doctrines of demons and I was looking at 
just, I was doing the devil's work. When I wasn't with the Lord, I was doing the devil's work. I was leading people into this like beautiful time of light on their merry way to hell. That's where I was going and that's where I was taking people with me when it came to working on yourself. And so I think that's all I wanted to say about Halloween. It's, it's the analogy there of how people would dress up like demons and try and conform so they wouldn't get messed with as much. That is a massive lie of the devil because the ones that don't get messed with as much, they're already his. Don't align yourself with the devil. So we are going to meet as a church. Um, I know a lot of you guys are from different places, so maybe just <laughs> unplug your doorbell, I don't know, or hand out tracks, I don't know. But just spend some time with us in prayer if you can um, on Sunday evening. You know, this is going to be, you know how the Lord's been doing a sifting process? This is going to be a really interesting Halloween because it's on the Lord's Day. It's on the day where people go to church. Now, are the Christians going to worship God in the morning and then align themselves with the devil in the evening? Who's going to do that? And, and can you do that? Can you? So join us on a Sunday evening in prayer. We're all meeting at 6.30 and we're going to do a night of prayer. Um, because, yeah, this, this week's been tough for a lot of us. You know, there's been so much activity um, from the enemy that we've all been under it. So we could do with praying for one another and lifting each other up in this time. So God bless you all and I'll see you next time. Bye.